The Vape Passion Show, episode 65. In this episode, we're going to do an e-juice review for number eight, Nilla Custard from cedarvape.com. And then we're going to talk about first impressions of the Icon RDA from Mike Vapes, vaping360.com republishing old outdated content and getting called out by the author, the Navy bans vaping on ships, submarines, and aircraft, the most popular vape tricker on Instagram, New Mexico's governor stops Bill from banning vaping, a proposed indoor vape ban removed from New York budget, and a study finds no concerning amounts of trace metals in e-cig vapor. Hey, welcome back to the Vape Passion Show. This is episode 65, and I'm recording this on Sunday, April 16th. So it's been a really busy weekend, uh, being Easter weekend at all. You know, we have a lot of things happening with the family, taking my daughter to uh, some, a couple of Easter egg hunts, things like that, spending time with family, having picnics. It's been really busy, and I'm really tired now. And uh, next weekend is probably going to be just as busy, because we're going to go visit some family. But it's been fun, and next week will I'm sure will be fun too. But... Um, so first I want to start out talking about some potentially bad news that I might have for some listeners of the show. So I might actually be going on a hiatus because I've decided to go back to school. Right now I already work full time and I continue, I plan to continue working full time. So I'll be going to school part time and that might not leave me with much time to, for doing this show anymore. Uh, I'm going to try and keep doing the vlog slash podcast for as long as I can, but I might eventually decide to switch to audio only rather than recording video, or I might even eventually decide just to stop doing the show entirely. Uh, I'm not really sure yet. I'm just going to have to play it by ear. Doing the show is really tough. Um, you know, even though this show is usually only around 15 to 25 minutes long, it takes hours of research every week to put this together, a couple of hours of editing and uh, post-production work. And I just don't know if I'm going to be able to do that once I start doing schoolwork again. I plan to keep doing reviews. I don't see those stopping. And instead of doing the show, I might decide to do some one-off informational videos, uh, kind of like the segments that I do in the vlog or podcast, just uh, not as often and not all at once within a week. So um, I'll just have to see how that all goes. But anyway, that's just something that's happening, just so you know, uh, and I'll be sure to keep you updated if things change. Okay, so with that news out of the way, let's get into the e-juice review. I have this number eight Nilla Custard. This is something that I bought myself a couple of months ago. It was on sale from a company, I don't remember who they are anymore, but um, they were getting rid of all their e-juices and all they really had left were Zero Nick e-juices. And, and it's because, you know, a lot of people don't vape Zero Nick, so... Uh, I think those are harder to get rid of, and a lot of times you'll find Zero Nick e-juice on sale. And this comes from a company called cedarvape.com, and uh, it's described as a rich and creamy vanilla concoction. That's about it. And it's a 30 PG, 70 VG e-juice, and it comes in 0, 3, 6, and 12 milligrams of nicotine and various sizes. You can get it in 15 mils for 5.95, 30 mils for 9.95, a 120 mil bottle for 29.95, a 240 mil bottle for 49.95, and a 480 ml bottle for 89.95. So, let's see what it smells like. Hmm. Now I gotta say, it doesn't really smell all that good, to be honest. It smells a little bit like vanilla custard, but almost kind of like vomit. Hmm. Well, I hope it doesn't taste like vomit. So I have it loaded up here in the IPv4 uh, with the Goon RDA on top, 60 watts, built at 0.18 ohms. Well, fortunately, it tastes very good. It tastes like a vanilla custard. It's a nice and sweet vanilla custard flavor. Very, very smooth. Yeah, the flavor is actually pretty good. I like it. So like I said, you can get it for pretty cheap. Uh, if you want to try it out, you can get a 15 mil for $5.95, uh, and the price goes up from there. To find it on cedarvape.com, I, their links aren't working. I actually found their, their product page for this by searching for cedarvape.com and Nilla Custard um, and found it through Google. I couldn't actually get to it from within the website. The links aren't working or they don't have links to get to it. So um, you might have to find it that way if you want to order it. And it's also really hard to find on any other website because it's got really bad brand name. It's got a really bad brand name. Number eight, vanilla custard or even nilla custard, it, Google just doesn't know how to find it. It's too broad, too general. So the only place I know where to get it is cedarvape.com. But yeah, it's, it's pretty affordable. It tastes really good. So I'd say if you like vanilla custards, go check it out. Okay, let's move on to the next topic. So 
Let's talk about my first impressions of the Icon RDA from Mike Vapes. Now, I never buy anything brand new when it first comes out. I'm, I'm just not the type of person that needs to be one of the first people to have something. But the Icon RDA had so much hype around it uh, for what seemed to be very good reasons. Not just because it was designed by Mike Vapes, but because the design that Mike and Vandy Vapes came up with was so good. They thought of everything for this RDA. The Icon has just about everything anyone could want in an RDA. Uh, good flavor production, multiple drip tips, lots of airflow, a large deck for large coils, a large juice well, an optional squonking pin, and the ability to be used on a hybrid device. Yeah, everything. So I just couldn't help myself. I ordered the Icon RDA from myvpro.com the day it was released, and I got it within a couple of days. That was Friday. Um, my, VB, my V Pro ships really fast, so that was awesome. I got it on Friday. I opened it up almost immediately, uh, started recording some video of it, just the opening up process, the unboxing process, and um, so I've been using it all weekend. I've gone through all the ins and outs of the atomizer. I've even installed the squonking pin so that I can use it on my Kinger drip box. And right off the bat, I installed some large 3.5 millimeter coils to see how they fit, and it wasn't a problem at all. The deck is huge. So it'll probably be a dream come true for any of you uh, coil artists or expert coil builders out there. I haven't spent nearly enough time with it to do a full review, but I just wanted to share some quick thoughts about it. First, the airflow is massive, and that's how I like it. I really like a lot of airflow. But you can also reduce the airflow quite a bit if that's what you prefer. The flavor is pretty good. Um, it's not the best that I've had from an RDA, but it's still very good. The large deck is really nice to work with too, and it holds a lot of e-juice which is really nice the 510 is really easy to remove and then replace with a squonking pin if that's what you want to do um, no problems at all with that and there's only one con that i can come up with uh just in these last three days of using this device or using this atomizer and that's with the post holes for the the coils so the post holes do not have a wall separating them from each other, but there's a raised edge designed to help prevent the coil legs from slipping down into the lower holes. These raised edges, they don't seem to help a whole lot. The coil legs still slip right down. I think it would have been better to have full walls but uh, it probably wouldn't have looked as cool. But those are my thoughts so far. Overall, it's a great RDA and I'm really glad that I bought it. It's definitely worth more than the $30 that they're asking for it. So if you like to use RDAs and you're on the fence on this one, I would say just go for it. Okay, moving on to the next topic. So vaping360.com republishes old outdated content and they got called out by the author. So vaping360.com is in some hot water this week with vapors of Reddit at least. Uh, Mooch, he wrote an article for them about the best 18650 batteries for vaping way back in 2015. Doesn't seem that long ago, but in the vaping world it is. Um, so Vaping360, they decided to republish the exact same article with a new date, as if it was a brand new article. This is actually a practice growing in popularity in the world of online journalism and in internet marketing. And I mentioned before that I work in the field of digital marketing, and I can tell you what the benefits are of doing this. For one, Google has a bias towards ranking new and fresh content. If you update the content and republish it with a new date, Google might, but not always, improve the ranking of that article. Another big benefit of this is that publishers can get older content in front of people who have never seen it before. These might be people who missed the article the first time around or it might even be uh, new subscribers and I think these are both excellent reasons for re-releasing old content uh, but vaping 360 did it all wrong they updated the published date without actually updating the content and another major issue with not updating the content is that the original content is now out of date and Mooch actually mentioned this on his post on reddit that his recommendations in 2017 are much different than the advice he gave in 2015 so this article really isn't very useful to give to people who haven't seen it before might even be more useful just to delete from the website and vaping 360 they did receive a big enough response from the vape community that they decided to change the published date back to its original date, as well as adding a warning to the page saying that the article was from 2015. Alright, the next bit of news here. The Navy bans vaping on ships, submarines, and aircraft. According to a press release from the Navy published on April 14th, 2017, the use, possession, storage, and charging of electronic cigarettes are now banned on all Navy ships, submarines, aircrafts, boats, and heavy equipment. This ban includes all Navy personnel and visitors. The Navy has stated that this prohibition is due mainly to injuries caused by exploding batteries on Navy premises, which they say have caused first and second degree burns and facial disfigurement. According to the Naval Safety Center, there have been at least 15 incidents of exploding vape batteries since October 2015. One particular case resulted in venting batteries creating smoke in a cargo section of an aircraft, which forced that aircraft to return to base and disrupting the Navy from conducting its mission. The press release does make it clear that these issues are due to various reasons, such as using faulty chargers, improper care or transportation of batteries, and just plain user error. And vaping is still allowed on shore while on base, 
but only in designated smoking areas. If you need nicotine anywhere else, they recommend using other tobacco cessation products. This policy will take effect on May 14th and will remain in place until the Navy fleet commanders do further analysis and make a final determination. All right, let's move on to the next topic. Let's talk about the most popular vape tricker on Instagram. GQ published a story last week about an extremely popular vape tricker named Austin Lawrence. The story has been getting picked up everywhere. Uh, the author of the article, Chris Gayomali, continuously rags on Lawrence for things like being a vape bro, having a small vocabulary, and for being a typical millennial. It's a little mean, but it's also pretty funny. And the author is sarcastic and snarky in most of his other articles, so uh, it makes sense that he would do it here too. GQ has dubbed Austin Lawrence as a vape god, or the, the vape god, due to his amazing ability to manipulate vapor in ways that seem to defy the laws of physics. So first a little bit about Austin Lawrence. He's 21 years old. He's the owner of Vertigo Vaporium in New Jersey. The owner of a vape shop at 21 is uh, pretty impressive. He must be a pretty smart guy. And also Lawrence is probably the most famous vape tricker on Instagram with more than 300,000 followers. He's so popular that he actually received a comment from Drake, the musician, on one of his Instagram posts. Uh, Drake asked Lawrence to hook him up with a vape. At that time, Drake was using a hookah. Then Lawrence said that he would send him a starter kit and then Drake asked if Lawrence wanted to be flo flown out to LA to speak directly to him. He agreed, flew out, he did some vape tricks for a few hours with Drake and then he left. The power of social media is really amazing, but I don't want to take anything away from Lawrence. He's dedicated to his craft. He starts tricking as soon as he wakes up in the morning and continues for three to four hours every day trying to do something new and crazy. And then in the evening at night, he focuses on doing clean tricks that he's already perfected. But yeah, this is just a fun story about vaping and a young guy making success for himself by working really hard at doing something that he loves. So if you're on Instagram, look him up and watch some of his videos. You'll find him at Instagram.com slash V Austin L. All right, moving on to the next topic. So New Mexico's governor stops a bill from banning vaping. Now here's some good news for vapors in New Mexico. So a Democrat senator in New Mexico sponsored the bill SB 318, which wanted to amend the D. Johnson Clean Indoor Act to include electronic cigarettes. So that's uh, New Mexico's Clean Indoor Act. Now this would have banned electronic cigarettes in and near entrances, windows, and ventilation systems of all workplaces and public places where smoking is also prohibited by that D. Johnson Clean Indoor Act. This would have also required that any workplace or property establish a smoke-free or vape-free area that extends to a reasonable distance from windows, doors, and vent systems. So the current governor of New Mexico is Republican Sue Martinez and she issued a pocket veto on the bill, essentially exercising her power to not take any action at all. This puts the bill on hold until it's too late to be dealt with during the legislative session. So for now, New Mexico residents are still allowed to vape in workplaces and public places that allow it, which is great. I think that a workplace or a public place should make their own decision if they want to allow that in their in their place of business if they want. And also we got some good news for residents of New York. A proposed indoor vape ban was removed from New York's budget. Governor Andrew Cuomo proposed a ban on electronic cigarettes in restaurants, workplaces, and public indoor places, as well as a 10 cents per milliliter tax on e-liquids. This was supposed to be included in the, the state's budget bill, but both of these items were removed or stripped from the bill before it was approved by lawmakers over the weekend. This apparently became an issue on March 20th when Senate Health Committee Chair Kemp Hannon publicly commented on the vape ban and said that there there seems to be some disagreement. The proposal continued to fall apart from there and apparently completely disintegrated before going to a vote. Either way, this is a big win for vapors of New York. This prevents higher costs on consumers due to the taxes and it also keeps vape shops in business, many of which who experts had expected to close if those regulations were passed. All right, now let's talk about a study. A study finds no concerning amounts of trace metals in e-cig vapor. Researchers from the College of Osteopathic Medicine at Lincoln Memorial University and researchers from the College of Osteopathic Medicine at William Carey University sought to learn if e-liquids contain trace metals when vaped. The theory that they tested was that trace metals could be inhaled and trapped in respiratory tissues leading to disease. The metals that they tested for were aluminum, arsenic, cadmium, copper, iron, manganese, nickel, lead, and zinc. The introduction of the study discusses the many concerns medical experts have regarding electronic cigarettes, specifically mentioning a study showing hidden formaldehydes and another study suggesting cell death induced by e-cig vapor. Interestingly though, they mention that these studies claim that smoking is as or more dangerous than smoking, yet 
do not provide any substantial evidence to make that claim. They actually say that. So really interesting for them to, to point that out, that there is no evidence, which is already a very positive sign going into this study. They also point out that there are no long-term studies that report severe health effects among, among ESIG users. So with these considerations in mind, they investigated the physical characteristics and chemical composition of inhaled vapor at the not nanoparticle level. They used two pumps to simulate puffing on Ego-style vape pins and conventional Marlboro cigarettes. The e-cigs were pushing 3.7 volts to plastic clarimizer tanks with coils reading between 2.2 and 2.6 ohms which would translate to around 5 to 6 watts. The e-juice they tested was a high nicotine tobacco e-liquid from my7s.com. It was a 80 PG 20 VG ratio e-liquid and had 24 milligrams of nicotine. They performed 45 cycles of a 5 second puff followed by a 10 second rest period. The results found that carbon monoxide levels were well below the national average reported by the EPA and as far as trace metals go, after 300 puffs over an 8 hour period, they found most metals to be nowhere near exposure limits set by OSHA and NIO OSH. Cadmium, copper, manganese, and lead were below detection limits, so they couldn't even find it in there. The researchers have also stated that the, the metals that they did detect might have actually existed in parts of the pump, testing material, or e-cig construction materials, meaning they might not be the result of the e-liquid or vaporization process. The only significant level of trace metals found in e-cig vapor in their study is nickel, which the researchers found at about 25% of exposure limits after an eight-hour period. And this is still pretty low, but it's the one outlier of all the other metals that they detected. The researchers then did an elemental analysis on the device and found that nickel existed in the coil, core, coil wire, and weld joints in the assembly, which is likely the culprit. They also said that this is a manifestation of the device and e-liquid combo that they chose and doesn't necessarily translate to high levels of nickel in all devices. Although nickel was found in much higher levels than any of the other trace metals, the study says that in reality this level of nickel inhalation is not likely to induce serious health risks. The researchers do recommend against the excessive use of nickel in the manufacturing process of coils and atomizers, as well as avoiding the use of metals uh, for coils like nichrome and Ni200 um, to prevent health-related issues. But in the end, they concluded that it is unlikely that other trace metals detected in e-cig generated aerosol pose any serious pathological risks. Now this was a well thought out study. They compared e-cigs to cigarettes. They reviewed research both in favor of and against electronic cigarettes. They used devices at recommended wattages rather than burning the cotton like many other studies do. They used a regular bottle of e-liquid e from a real company who sells e-juice, not making their own and not modifying it to their needs. And they even talked about the different types of wires that vapors use to build coils, like Ni200 and Canthal. They did a lot of research to understand vaping before doing this study, which was great to see. And on a side note, have you noticed all of the pro-vaping research that has been coming out lately this year? It's almost non-stop, or at least it seems like it to me. And what's interesting about this is that Dr. Konstantinos Farsalinos actually predicted this would happen at the end of last year, so it's really exciting. Okay, that's all I have for this week. You'll find the show notes for this episode on vapepassion.com. Just do a search for episode 65. If you want to support this show, consider donating to my Patreon page at patreon.com slash vape passion you can follow me on twitter at vape passion and i'm also on facebook if you like this weekly show please consider giving me a thumbs up on the video and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber you can also subscribe to the podcast version of the show on either itunes stitcher or google play if you'd like to get notifications of new reviews or of the show you can sign up to receive my weekly email on vapepassion.com and if you have any questions or comments please feel free to email me anytime at alex at vapepassion.com all right i'll see you next week